So what is Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and Hypermobility Spectrum Disorder? Two separate things, very similar. Um, first hurdle to get over is the pronunciation. So you may notice that I tend to say Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Other people it's Ehlers-Danlos. And, and you know it's very similar and also quite different. And then of course you uh, have consultants who have never heard of it before and say hilarious things um, instead of the two the two names. And that's what it is. It's basically two surnames together. So if you get that into your head, that kind of uh, that kind of way, and then you know it's it's a bit of a mouthful when you're first diagnosed or the lead up to diagnosis. Um, and there's loads of terminologies out there that you will come across. Um, and the name is the first one. Uh, so that's the first hurdle to get over: Ehlers-Danlos syndrome or Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. And then there's hypermobility spectrum disorder. So it's EDS or HSD. Um, so basically hypermobility is on a spectrum and that kind of came about in 2017 uh, with the new criteria. Um, if you're in any online support groups for EDS and HSD you've probably heard a lot about this new criteria. It doesn't get used a lot in Ireland because nothing obviously is up to date here. Um, so you might hear old terms like EDS. EDS has always been around as a term but HSD is completely new. You might have heard before like HMS, um, hypermo like so, a hypermobility uh, syndrome, um, and you probably have heard loads of other terms as well, so joint hypermobility syndrome, um, and and so forth and so on. But but it, now it is called HSD, so that's the new terminology, and that's what we should use as a community here in Ireland because if we're campaigning for anything or canvassing for anything, we need to be up to date on the terms, whether or not we agree with the you know, the 2017 criteria or not, it is now officially EDS and HSD. So I would agree to those terms, um, if maybe not everything in the criteria. So Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and Hypermobility Spectrum Disorders um, are a type of hypermobility conditions, which basically means that with people with these conditions, you have faulty collagen, faulty collagen um, all over the body. So collagen being the glue that holds the body together, um, which you've probably heard of before as well. Um, and basically what that means is that say you have the faulty glue on a chair or any kind of structure, things just tend to fall apart. So our joints partially dislocate and sometimes fully dislocate. Partial dislocations you'll notice are usually called sub subluxion, sub subluxation, subluxing basically. Um, and different forms of that word. Um, so I'll probably do another video on that kind of explaining what that feels like, how to to tell if you're subluxing, because it can be a bit awkward when when it's something you've always lived with. I mean, how do you how do you know? I mean, that would be obviously you think that would be obvious. You think that would be the biggest sign. But there's so many people with EDS and HSD that go their whole lives not realizing they have the condition because you know if you're in chronic pain since since all you can remember um, and you have these minor dislocations, you might not actually know, believe it or not, that that's what's happening. So I'll do another video kind of talking about that. So I just, you know, doing the basics right now of what EDS and HSD are. So as I said, EDS and HSD are in a spectrum. Um, so on one end of the spectrum of hypermobility, you'll have EDS and there's 13 types. So I'm not going to list them all because I said I just want to do a basic video like if you're completely new to EDS and HSD. So there's 13 types. Hypermobility type at EDS is the most common type. Um, you will often hear people with EDS saying we're not actually rare, we're rarely diagnosed. And that would definitely be true for the hypermobility type of EDS. Um, as you go further along the spectrum, you'll come across vascular EDS, which is the most severe form of, of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Um, and also the rarest type. So that is a true rare condition. Um, if you have the hypermobility type of EDS like I do, haven't had the genetic testing yet, but almost, almost positive, and that's what I, my di current diagnosis is. Um, so if you have that type of EDS, the hypermobility type, you're on the cusp of a rare condition. So, you know, it's we should have services at least for the basic types of EDS because they're not rare. They're just rarely diagnosed, and especially here in Ireland. And you'll hear me say that all the time. You'll be sick of me saying that. Um, so you have EDS, 13 types. Then you go down the line and you have hypermobility spectrum disorder, HSD. 
Um, now, there's a, several types of HSD as well, depending on different parts of your body dislocating. Um, um, some people only maybe dislocate or hyperextend in one or two joints, um, others it's all over. And really the only person that can tell you whether or not you have EDS or HSD is a trained rheumatologist. Um, I know, you know, there's a lot of things these days, um, the EDS Society are trying to get GPs and physios more involved and interactive, and that would be fantastic if they could diagnose. But really, especially here in Ireland, if you're gonna get a diagnosis, it's gonna be through a rheumatologist. And it's, you're probably going to have to go private, um, unfortunately. I mean, there, there's been cases where publicly people have gotten diagnosis or they've gotten very close to a diagnosis that they would just say, well, that's a diagnosis, even though if I don't physically have it on paper. But for the majority of people, you probably will have to go private. You'll just get fed up of waiting as well. Um, and something to, to note about EDS and HSD you know, we should all work together. I think whether you have a form of EDS or a form of HSD, we're not in competition. Um, I, I hope no one thinks that. I hope it's not like, I don't know if sometimes in the, you know, chronic condition community that where it's like, well, I'm sicker than you kind of thing. And when we say that hypermobility is on a spectrum, people think of it like a scale. So you, they think of it like, you know, oh, well, you don't have EDS, you only have HSD. HSD. And, you know, it doesn't, whether or not you have one of the types of EDS or one of the types of HSD doesn't really tell you what the person's going through. It doesn't tell you how much they dislocate, how much pain they're in, um, all those kind of things. It doesn't mean they're in any less pain if someone has hypermobility spectrum disorder over having actual EDS. They're both, you know, they're both very similar conditions and it doesn't tell you how hypermobile the patient is. Um, something as well that, you know, when we talk about the criteria, they only look at certain t parts um, of your body dislocating and certain points um, in the system. So it's, you know, things that they don't look at, it still count. I mean, if, if you're hypermobile and dislocating in a joint that isn't, you know, checked by your rheumatologist and doesn't go towards your diagnosis, it still counts. You're still in a lot of pain. So you can't tell how much pain someone is in just because they have HSD or just because they have EDS. Everyone is very different um, in that regard. So it's important to note that. And we're not in competition in any way whatsoever. We're one big community, as far as I'm concerned, and I hope everyone kind of feels the same way as well. Um, you know, diagnosis itself of any condition doesn't change really what the person's going through. It's nice to have a title on something, but if you've been in pain all your life, it could be called blah, 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 blah. Like, it really doesn't matter what we call it, you know? Um, it doesn't change your suffering, it doesn't change what you're going through. So I would say that as well, that if you think you've EDS and you get a diagnosis of HSD, there's nothing wrong with that. You're still valid, your pain is still valid, and we still believe you as a community. Um, so I just kind of wanted to put that out there. So as I said, faulty collagen, we dislocate. That's the very basic understanding of EDS. Um, Sometimes we fully dislocate as well and you may or may not be able to get those dislocations back in yourself and you may go to A&E or you may just, if you're like me, stay at home and cry until until something happens. But um, yeah, and that's that's the very basics. I suppose then when we go into comorbid conditions, um, a lot of people with EDS will not only have comorbid conditions, but they'll have crossover conditions. So I mean... A lot of us have gastro problems, for instance, um, extremely common. And then, of course, you have the comorbid conditions like POTS types of dysautonomia um, and lots of other things. So we can't really say that EDS is just about joints. It's not just about overstretching, dislocating joints. That's not that's not the case. And um, I think that's what part of the problem is when it comes to awareness when it comes to trying to teach doctors, especially here in Ireland, because um, I think if you asked within the HSE, you know, if you asked high up, that's kind of what would come back, that it's just a joint issue and it's not just our joints. Um, and also, of course, I should uh, point out that 
a lot of people with EDS will have certain signs as well. So if you go to a trained rheumatologist and they're looking at you for signs of EDS or HSD, they'll also look at your skin. So you might have, um, you might be quite pale. I mean, if you're Irish, you're probably pale anyway. Uh, your skin might be quite translucent, especially if you have vascular type, but also just if you have the other types of EDS as well. Um, they will look at the stretchiness of your skin. Again, everyone's different. You might like have slightly stretchy skin, you might have really stretchy skin, but usually you'll have at least slightly stretchier skin than the, you know, than the general public. Um, then there's other signs as well. If you have vascular EDS, there's certain facial features. Uh, so you might have a thin nose, thin lips, that kind of thing, quite big eyes. Um, but again, not always. I mean, you can't always tell by looking at someone so you do need a trained rheumatologist and you need genetic testing as well now I mentioned genetic testing earlier so I have the hypermobility type of EDS and unfortunately there hasn't been the the mutation exact mutation pinpointed to diagnose someone with genetic testing so the hypermobility type is undone through clinical findings um which can make it unfortunately harder to diagnose but in saying that, there's a couple of types of the EDS that are, you know, that you can look at uh, through genetic testing. Um, and it is important for, I would say, I would say it is important realistically for everyone with EDS to get genetic testing. But that's just not the, you know, that's not the reality. It's not readily available. Um, I'm sure if you, like, I'm on a waiting list for geneticists. And it might get to be the case that by the time I get there, they're like, well, we don't think you're high risk or anything, so we you don't need the genetic testing. Um, so, you know, in a perfect world, I think everyone with EDS would have genetic testing just to confirm that you don't have one of the, um, you know, the rare types like vascular. Because obviously, if you have vascular EDS, you want to know about it. You want to know the signs to look out for. Um, you know, you want to know if you're at risk. Um, so for the hypermobility type of EDS, it's all clinical. Uh, so you go to your rheumatologist, they'll do, I mean, in a perfect world, again, <laughs> you go to your rheumatologist and I saw that with Brian Mulcahy in Cork, and I'm sure if you're in the EDS community here in Ireland, you will know that name well. Um, it was it was a long assessment, um, very expensive, but you know, that's, that's unfortunately the way things are. Um, I think he must have spent a couple of hours though, it was, it was a good long appointment. Um, and he went through a lot of things with me. Um, and then after that, a couple of years after that, I went to London as well to see a consultant there just for just for further help. Um, there's nothing really like the consultants in London. There, there really isn't. We don't have anything like that in Ireland. Um, I wouldn't even mind going private here if it, that if the, if the case was that we had that kind of team, that kind of hypermobility unit here in Ireland, but we don't, unfortunately. So if you're going for a diagnosis, if you're not diagnosed yet and you live in Ireland, um, I'm going to put a section up on the website actually of, you know, places to actually go for help. So there are, as I mentioned, Brian Mulcahy, and there's a, you know, there's at least another private rheumatologist that I know of. So I'm going to edit the website soon and have that section up there, just kind of where to go for help. And I'm also just going to link to the Facebook support groups, because if you're not in them yet, I would suggest you go there. Um... And so that's really basically what EDS is. So it's faulty collagen, causes us to be bendy, causes us to be hypermobile. And you know, you might hear that being hypermobile is a good thing. Um, being hypermobile and in pain is not a good thing. That means that you more likely have something wrong and it could be EDS or HSD. So just remember that, the, the old terminology of double jointed, um, you know, that you might have seen with gym, gymnasts and such. Um, it's not always a good thing. Um, but it's, sometimes it's not a bad thing. You can be hypermobile. You can learn to be hypermobile like a lot of people do at yoga. And that's absolutely fine. If you're hypermobile naturally and you are in pain, then you possibly have EDS or HSD. And if that's the case and you don't know where to turn to, press subscribe and follow us. And I will get that information up on the website soon. I hope that's answered all the very basics of what EDS is and what HSD is. Um, if there's any other questions at all, feel free to comment and I'll try to answer.